we have seen different type of data structures like arrays, uh, lists, and uh, uh, in our previous examples, right? Uh, here, we will introduce to something called a tree data structure. So basically, what does tree have? It has basically a node, okay? A tree has a node, and it also shows the how uh, this node is connected to the other nodes. Like for example here, so a tree has a basic entity of a tree is a node. A node is this block. This complete thing is called a node. So what does node contains? It contains actually the data because every data structure will hold some data, right? It could be a string, a number, uh, right? Or a, a character. So it contains the data plus along with that, it contains uh, two other extra information, which is the link. So it has link information, right? In this case, you have left link and a right link, okay? And what does left link do? It basically connects on the left side, it connects to another node. And what does right link do? If it connects to another node on the right side, right? Similarly, you can build a relationship with different node structures. And finally, if you have a node where you don't have any more left or right, right? You can place a null pointer here. When I say here X, it means null. There is nothing on the left or the right. Okay. If you look at this node, there is something on the left side, right? This link is there. It is connecting to a node. Whereas on this side, there is no other node connected. That is why there is a null data structure. So this is very important. So no, tree consists of a node. Okay. It has multiple nodes. So you can think of it as if you want to build a tree, basically you will build a node data structure. So you'll put something called a 10. And if you want to place some numbers here, you'll put a five, say you have something called 12. And how do you, connect? you have two pointers. You have a left pointer and you have a right pointer. So you will put your left pointer connected to this node and your right pointer connected to this node. And here, if you say five, again, has something called, um, it is connected to say three, right? And it is also connected to something called four. Right, so you can keep building and say from here on, it is not connected. Say three is not connected to anymore. This is the last node, okay? Whereas say four is, uh, uh, okay, say this is the last node, okay? Now, similarly, you can build for it here also. You can, you can extend trees not only, like it's not mandatory that you need to have your left and right, okay? Sometimes you may not have both. That means that's your last node. Sometimes you can have only your left side. Like in this case, I have only left. Say I have 11 and I don't have anything. I, I don't have any other right node. So it's a dynamic data structure. You can keep building this. So examples of trees, we see this very commonly. Wherever you want to do some kind of a branching and relationship, you can use trees. Like uh, say, if you take languages, you can classify them as natural programming and then there are different types of uh, languages right you can put them something like this now here um, i'll show you one more example okay say you have this algebraic expression right this one this also you can represent in the form of tree so how do you represent it whenever you take this is how basically uh, the computer evaluates uh, al uh, algebraic expressions, right? How does computer compute this kind of a program? So what you can do is um, here, when you look at it, there are two components to it, right? One is this complete one, this bigger bracket, what you see here. And then you see this bracket, right? Now to compute this symbol, this minus symbol, you need to compute the left-hand side of it. You need to compute the right-hand side of it. And you can represent this something like this. So you have a minus symbol, and it has something to be computed on the left and something to be computed on the right. Now, if you further look at the left side, here again, you will see that there is one more symbol, one more expression, right? Where you need something on the left and you need something on the right. So that's how you put the division symbol here. And you know that there is something on the left and there is something on the right. Now the left, if you look at it, again, you have one more symbol. Right? So you know that there is something to the left and right. That is why you put your plus here. Now you know, whatever is on the left, it's no more you need to compute it. It is directly available for you. So here also right is directly available for you, right? 
Now coming to the left, right of this division, it is directly available for you, right? So now we are done, done with this left, right? This complete left is done. Similarly, we do the right side of this. So again, you see here, you have some algebraic expression. You can put it up here. And the left side of this is already available and the right side also is available. So it is not just, uh, it's not just like a, a path or something like that for which you will use trees, but also for computing this algebraic expressions, you will use trees. Okay, this is another example of where trees are used. Okay, before we come to terminology, I'll just give you, uh, Till now, we have seen trees where we have only two splits. You can have trees, you can have different kinds of trees. Say you have B, C, D. You have many, many subtrees. Right? So basically what I'm trying to stress is here, we have seen example of where there is only two links, left and right link. But here you could have possibly many links. You could have link one, here you can't call just left and right, right? So you have link one, link two, link three, link four, right? You have multiple links. This is also a tree, okay? This is also a tree. This is also a tree, but this is a special type of tree because there are specifically only two, only left and right, only two degrees are there. This is a special type of tree called binary tree. Okay, then I'm, we'll see some couple of terminologies. Again, this is an example of a tree. If you look at it, there is always a starting node to the tree data structure from where all the branches span out, right? So the starting node is called root node. Okay. And always as you build up your tree, you will see some ending nodes. Ending nodes are where you don't have any further subtrees or further nodes down it. You don't have any link going downwards, right? So these are all your last nodes. Your last nodes are called leaves. So in this case, all of these are leaves. So root and leaf is a very important terminology you need to remember. So given a tree, you should be able to easily identify what is the root, what is the leaf. What are these other nodes? You have so many other nodes here, right? Like J, B, T, E. These are all called intermediate nodes. Okay, these are all intermediate nodes. Okay. Okay, now uh, we said a tree is a basic uh, unit is a node. Right? We talked about this. It can have data. It will have a link. If it's a binary link, it will have two links. If it is, a, say, four link tree, uh, you can have something like this. One, two, three. So you can have different, different links. Okay. This, this, this block is a node. Okay. This complete block, which holds your data and your links, is a node. Now, this every node in a tree has a certain property. Okay, let's look at some of the properties. Okay. They have properties called parent, predecessor, child, successor, root leaf we already saw. So let's uh, look at these definitions. To explain this, I will take one node called B here. Okay. So just look at this. Basically we are telling, uh, we are talking about hierarchy now, relationship between other nodes. So we say B is a predecessor, okay? B is a predecessor for all of these. That means what? B is like the parent, okay? And all your underlying subtree come under that, right? If you see D, it is coming out of B. If you see E, it is coming out of B. Even H, right? Indirectly, if you go up, it is, it is getting connected to B. Even here, it gets connected to B. So H and I are indirectly connected to B. But if B is not there, none of these nodes will be there. So that is why B is the predecessor of all of these, okay? Now, same thing, uh, uh, a special definition for a predecessor is a parent. Now we say B 
B is predecessor of all of these four nodes, but B is parent of only D and E. That means what? We only check direct connectivity, right? These direct connectivity, so these D and E, right? So the parent of D is B, parent of E is B. So you understand the difference between predecessor versus parent? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now here, let's take this example. Okay. Um, let's look at this tree. Okay. Uh, you tell me who is the predecessor of F and G? Who is the predecessor of F and G? C, ma'am. Correct. C. And who is the parent of F and G? C, so ma'am. C only, right? Correct. In this case, because both we have only direct connectivity. So we have both predecessor and parent as same. However, say if I had something called E. E also, right? So here, uh, can, is, now uh, tell me yes or no, true or false. Is C, is the C node predecessor of E? Is this true? I'm saying C is predecessor of E. Uh, I mean this C, okay, I'm talking about this C. Is it true, true or false? Is C predecessor of E? C is predecessor of E, correct or not? No, ma'am. Why no? See, there is a difference between predecessor and parent. Predecessor means it's like your grandfather type. I mean, in, if we talk about relationships, right? Anywhere in your generation, if it is connected, it is a predecessor, right? C is like you can say a grandfather of E. It's not directly connected, but if you if C is not there, this whole thing will not be there. Even E will not be there, right? So C is predecessor of E. Okay, this is true. However, now look at this. E C parent of E. How about this one? Is it true or false? Parent. C is parent of E. Look at this. Parent means immediate or direct. It should be direct connection. Is E directly connected to C? No, right? No, ma'am. Yeah, so this is true or false? C is parent of E. This statement is true or false? True, ma'am. Uh, read again. C is parent of E. Parent, mama, a false. False. Okay. So you understood the difference between predecessor and parent, right? Parent means direct connect, directly upward. Predecessor means it is somehow connected. Okay. Now, till now, what we saw was this upward connection. Parent, predecessor is what we saw upwards. Okay. Now, the just the reverse is successor and a child. Successor and child means I'm talking downwards. Okay. So if you look at this, the same node, we are talking about node property, right? So for us, the focus is still B only. So for B, now let us see who is the successor of B. Successor of B are anything above it. These are all successors. Okay. But so successors of B is the successor of all of these. Okay. And child is B the child of direct connectivity G. So B is the successor of A and J. 
and B is the direct child of only J. Got it? Okay, let's ask some more questions here. So just look at this and tell me, uh, say, uh, J, okay? Tell me who is the successors of J? Successors means, uh, successors of J mean all its children, okay? If I say, so who are all the successors of J? Successors means downwards. Predecessor means, predecessor of J means it will be upwards, okay? So who are all the successors of J? The successors of J will be B, H and I. Okay, and who is the child of J? Children of J, I'll put it that way. Okay, so who are all the children of J? Who are all B. the children of J? Only B. Okay. Uh, so you, do, you can... Uh, you need to read the question correctly and answer this. Okay. Similarly, it will take one more example. Um, let's take uh, here B or let me see C. Okay. Um, who are the who are the predecessors of C? Who are the predecessors of C? The C is there. Predecessors means anything above. Okay, I think one thing when I was explaining, if you look at this, these definitions here, node B is predecessor of, okay? So that, this is how I'm explaining here. Okay, but if you look at this question, who are the successors of C? or who are the predecessors of C. So you can look at this question. If, if a question is asked like this, you can directly look at it as parent. Who is the parent of C? Let's ask the direct first question. Who is the parent of C? Parent of C is? A. A. Correct. Okay. And who are the children of C? F and G. F and G. Correct. Okay, parent and child is very direct. I think you can just look at it and uh, answer. Now, if you say who are the predecessors, if there are, uh, okay, down, let's, let me take one more example. Instead of C, let me take B. So who are the predecessors of B? A and J. Correct. Predecessor, you can think of like grandparents, okay, A and J. And uh, who are the successors of uh, C. Successors, you can think of like grandchildren. Successors of uh, C, uh, not C, B. Tell me successors of B. Who are successors of B? You know the children of B, D and E, but who are the successors of B? D E H I. D E H I. Very good. Okay. So that's what you need to remember. Parent, child, predecessor, successor. Okay. These four definitions are clear. Okay. Now the question. Uh, here, this is a root, right? Who is the predecessor of A here? Question is, who is the predecessor of A? Yeah.
yeah so you understood my question who is the okay tell me who is the parent of a in this tree who is the parent of a no one ma'am no parent if parent only is not there grandparent also will not be there right no grandparent that means no parent or no predecessor so which is that node in a tree there will be one special node in a tree which will not have any predecessor or it will not have any parent such node is called a root okay now look at this and tell me uh, give me the nodes which have no successors h i e f correct h i e f and g right so these type kind of nodes are also called as so all of these nodes which don't have any successors or any children are also called as leaf correct by looking at it you knew what root and leaf was but now you know the definition of root and leaf root is which has no parent or no predecessor leaf is which has no child or no successor okay so you know the formal definition of root and leaf also okay uh, just uh, look at this diagram and visually and you can uh, understand all the remaining definitions also it should not be a problem okay link link is this one it connects two nodes right so these are called links okay here there are two links so this is a binary tree okay here there are three links in this example there are three links connecting the parent to the child so this is not a binary tree this is which because it is having more than two links now similarly you look at this now you will appreciate trees are in them recursive by nature this is very important properties of tree trees right are recursive in nature because you look at this now you, you saw this right you saw that a is a parent and it has a left child and it has right child now look at its left left side right again you can further say there is a parent right and there is a sub child right now look at b b you can treat it like another tree by itself that is why these are all called sub trees so if you just look at this you can draw another tree here right h i e right this itself is another tree it's a sub tree of the main tree now if you look at this this again is a sub tree because i can draw it like this d h n i right so basically a tree consists of many sub trees within it right that is the nature of the tree that is how we we say tree is by itself recursive in nature okay we will see this property of recursiveness of tree when we do the traversal i'll tell you what traversal is but this is the point i want to highlight right look any any logic to apply here you can consecutively apply to this you can apply to this because they are in turn sub trees by themselves okay so you have something called a degree degree is nothing but number of children or number of trees so here a has two children so the degree of a is 2 similarly b has two children degree of b is 2 so you can say number of children or number of sub trees here b has two sub trees right this is one sub tree this is another sub tree a single node is also a sub tree okay so it you can say how many ever sub trees a node has or how many ever children the node has both definitions are okay that is a degree okay and uh, you if you look at it if you look at any node right you have something called an in degree okay you have something called an in degree that means to reach b and you have something called an out degree out degree means out of b 
So you have an in degree and you have an out degree. Okay. So if you look at B in degree of B is one because there is only one node coming out of it. Out degree of B is two. Okay. In a binary tree, maximum you will have two out degrees. Okay. Now um, I will take the same diagram. Okay. Now I'll introduce you to something called level. Now, if you look at it, you can draw something like this, right? This is at If you split, split your tree like this, you can see. Okay, let me draw here. This is all at level. This is all at level, one level. This is another level. This is another. Correct? This is the first level, or I will say level one. or I'll say level zero. This is called level zero. The root node is always at level zero. This one is level one, right? This one is level two. This one is level three. And finally, this one is level four. You understood the level? This is like, um, if I put it this way, A is level zero, okay? I can have two children. I don't need to put an arrow here, okay? It means that it is going here. I, I, for trees, generally, you don't put arrows. So B and C. So B and C are at level two. Okay, you tell me now, give me the name of the nodes which are at level zero. Okay, in this, let me... Okay, look at this. You can ignore this one. This is, I mean, it's not drawn correctly, so it may be difficult for you to identify the levels. Okay. Okay, just look at this tree and tell which are the nodes at level zero? Which node is at level zero? So root node always will be at level zero. You can also tell it that way. Okay, what are the nodes at level one? B and C. Correct. So you now you can add, appreciate the level, right? I'm talking like this, right? Which are the nodes at level two? This is B. So what are the nodes at level two? D, E, F. Similarly, what are the nodes at level three? I have H and G. I don't have any node at level four. Okay. You understood what is leveled, right? Okay. Um, now, if I have to find, I have to uh, find H. If I have to find the node H, okay, in a tree, you cannot directly go to that node, okay, you always have to start from root, okay, then find your way up to H, okay, uh, we will come to what are the different techniques that is called traversal, traversal means, how do you go to each node and check whether that is the node that you want or not, okay, traversal is visiting, traversal means visiting each node, okay, now, before we go to that, no, just look at this tree and tell me how will you find H? What will be your path to H? Huh? Anybody? How can I go to H? First, where I have to go? 
can i go directly to h no ma no so first where you will go you always have to start with root you always root. have to go to a so after a where you will go you have two choices you can either go to b or c but you want to go to h so which root you will take b or c right because if you take c you cannot find h so you take this root now again you have two choices d or e which where will you go you getting my point e you have correct so we go here now you have a choice so you selected you let me go to e so you visited a then visited b then visited e okay and finally you will visit h right you will take this so this path that you took from a to b b to e e to h this is called a path okay okay um the levels that we saw right so always the root we said it's at level 0 level 1 level 2 level 3 now same thing there is another definition called something called the depth of a tree depth of a tree is same similar concept of level only you start from root and you go to leaf m e a f okay start from root to leaf and you say how many levels you have to cross to go from root to leaf the max don't don't some trees may end here only okay so like for example if you have a smaller tree like you don't have this right you cannot say that depth of this tree is one because i'm going from root to leaf and i have finished no you should go to the maximum level okay so depth of this tree will be you have to visit this one 1 2 3 4 so depth of this tree is 4 got it level plus 0 to 3 depth is 4 it's it's level you can treat it like array index right you used to start from 0 1 2 3 3. and depth was something like the length of the array where you count number of elements right so something like that so the depth of the tree is 1 2 3 4 4 four is the depth of the tree okay um uh, we talked about parent and uh, child relationship let's talk of uh, one other okay there is also something called siblings siblings means brother sisters right who have same parent so look at this or you only tell me give me an example of siblings look at this tree and give me some examples of sibling which are the nodes which can be called siblings siblings means which have same parent right it's like siblings you call brother sisters as siblings right so give me example look at this tree tell me nodes which have same parent they are the siblings hmm? jis okay j j is sibling of j and what is sibling c correct j and c are siblings because they belong to the same parent correct can you give me one more example f g f and g are siblings perfect you understood what sibling is okay okay um i think we are pretty much done well, one other thing so you go we always said that you can go from root to leaf okay so if you uh, like what we did here no we searched the element h right we went from root to leaf we did something like this so this is called 
descending. Descending the tree. Right, we went from top to bottom. Now, in if someone says go from leaf, you go and find up. This is called climbing the tree. I mean, it's nowhere it's used, but just to know climbing or ascending the tree. And the, sometimes you know, these definitions are getting confusing because if you look at the actual tree, if you have tree in your picture, right, it's all you have to reverse your definitions. Like tree generally have your roots down, and then you have your leaf something here, right? But in the, um, the data structure, you will have a root up, right? And you have some nodes here. And finally, down, you will have leaf, right? So it's, it's the reverse way you have to imagine. Okay. Okay. Um, most of the times, we will have one data structure, which will be only of one tree. But sometimes, right, you can have a group of trees. A, B, C, D. This is one. You can have some say X, Y, Z. You can have something like this. And if they are together, right here, we have actually two trees. These are not subtrees because they are not connected to a common parent. These are two different trees. This is tree one. Three, two. And individually, they have their own roots. So this is root one. This is root two, right? Different roots, different trees. This kind of a group is called a forest. Okay. We don't have any uh, examples or programs uh, which talk about, which deal with forest, but just to know a grouping of trees is called forest. But for all practical purposes, we will deal only with trees. Okay. Um, and I'll go for another 10 minutes and then we can take a break before we look at traversals. Okay. Um, like I said, no, you can have different combination of trees. Like you can have a tree with more than two uh, levels. Right. You can have. There is no limit. Okay. You can have so many branches. Okay. But for more uh, easier purposes, we will only be looking at two levels. I told you before also. So this kind of a tree is called binary tree. This is a special type of tree and it has some properties. So now we will take a look at what are the properties of a binary tree. So definitely uh, one property is it can have only two branches. So let's take one tree and then define it. This is a binary tree. If you look at it now, every node has two children, right? It didn't stop anywhere. Like no one has less children. No one has two children, right? Everybody has two children. And if you look at this, this is fully populated. Like that means you have these levels. At each level, they are fully populated, right? So this is level zero, level one level two, level three, okay? So by just by looking at this, right, we can come up with very fixed uh, uh, calculations. Like you have a uh, standard formulas that you can apply. You can predictively tell if you're given a number of nodes, okay? You can tell what is the depth of it, how many nodes will be in each level. It is very fixed. Any binary tree at level zero, it will have number. If you look at number of nodes, this is one of the properties of a binary tree, okay? You can very, uh, perfectly 100% you can tell how many nodes will be there in one each level right 
you don't even have to look at the tree if somebody tells you that there are say 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 15 nodes right so any binary tree at level 0 will have one node at level 2 max it can have two nodes it cannot go more than two nodes i cannot have a tree with three nodes right at level 2 you know that maximum capacity is four nodes at level 3 this is fixed you cannot go more than this you can have lesser than that but not more than that right eight right so if you look at this say if i want to say uh, what is at level l okay i'll call it as level l can somebody tell what will be the at level l do you see any formula that you can say how is this connected at 0 it is 1 1 it is 2 at 2 it is 4 3 it is 8 any any formula you can think of or before even going to level if i say level 4 can you guess what will be the number of nodes at level 4 it's like a pattern no so you can apply this so this is 2 to the power of 0 is 1 2 to the power of 1 is 2 2 to the power of 2 is 4 2 to the power of 3 is 8 So if somebody says give me number of nodes at level four, you can say two to the power of that level. This is what sixteen. So you can even even without drawing, right? If you draw, you will get sixteen nodes, right? Even without drawing, you can guess. So similarly, if somebody tells at some level L, what will be the number of nodes? You know, it is two to the power of L, right? So you can predict this. So this is one of the properties of a binary tree. i'm just looking at your textbook if there are any other properties yeah um we also saw the level uh, so we saw the levels we saw the levels and we also told what is the was a leave here and we also told about height right height is something similar to level plus 1 you have to do so if you um if somebody says that, okay you tell me in this example what is the height of this tree what is the height of this tree hmm? this this tree what is the height of this tree i told you it's it's like level is like an index and height is like the length of the tree right so if you have 0 1 2 3 height is 1 2 3 4 you are you are with me i see i mean i hear all silence i hope you all are there yes ma'am yeah so what is the height of the tree so height of the tree is 4 okay okay now the question we we saw we saw level we saw given a level i can tell you how many nodes are there in that level now the question is can you tell me how many nodes together it will be so if i say okay say a height of the tree is 4 how many nodes are there in this uh, tree how many binary in a binary tree how many nodes will be there okay before that you tell me in this node how many nodes are there so we know that here we have one then here we have two here we have four here we have eight so if you add up how much you will get 10 14 15 so total number of nodes in this are 15 tree are 15 
right? So can you come up with any, so if somebody says, okay, I will tell you the height of the tree is H. Can you tell me number of nodes in the tree? Can you find any relationship between this and this? So what we can do is we can have something like height two to the power of four minus one. So we know that two to the power of four is 16, 16 minus one is 15. Okay. So if somebody says, okay, height of the tree is this, can you tell me number of nodes? One of the way to do is two to the power of height minus one. Okay. So one easy way is you draw this. Okay. Look at this. Then it is easy for you to come up with this. Instead of just by hearting that, okay, uh, a number of nodes in each level is two to the power of L. Instead of doing that, you do this. So it's easy for you to understand. A number of nodes in a full tree will be height minus one, two to the power of height minus one. These are all properties. I mean, the, the, nobody will ask you given the height, calculate the number of nodes, but the question will be, uh, you give the properties, you should define the properties of a binary tree, right? You can tell it in text, but these formulas will fetch you more points. I'm just thinking any other important properties. Okay. Um, okay, just uh, two other variants of binary tree, just definitions, no formulas and all. Strict binary tree, okay. And there is something called full full or complete binary tree. E-T-E. Complete binary tree, right? What is a strict binary tree? Strict binary tree is, it says that before you go to a level, we, we spoke of level, right? This is level zero. Uh, this is level one. Okay, in level one, you can add some node, right? Now I want to add a third node, right? What it says is you should not go and pick a new level. You don't, you should not go to a new level before this level's capacity is full, right? So it says instead of going and adding here, you first fill up this capacity. So what do you mean by fill up? I can have some capacity here, right? I can put here. So I should always fill this up fill the max at this level, then only go ahead and add here. Okay, you understand what is strict? This is level two. Okay, now tell me, I want to add few more nodes. So A, B, C, D is there. I want to add E, F, G, H, and I. Let's pick E. You tell me, is this correct or wrong? If it's a strict binary tree, is this allowed? In a strict binary tree, can I add E here? No, you did not get the question. You all are there? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so the question is, so I said in a strict binary, what is strict? Strict, see, this is a binary tree, no problem, okay? But it's not a strict. Strict means there is some condition. It says, don't unnecessarily go, to, like suppose um, you all come and sit in a class, okay? You have your benches, right? Teacher will always say, come and fill up that benches in the first row before you go to the last row, right? You cannot keep some middle rows empty and go take your last row right? Your capacity is not full. It's very hard for the teacher to say, even talk to you or for you to talk to the teacher, right? So what will they say? Don't all the last benches come front. I am sure you would have heard that. So that's what strict means, right? Strict is unnecessarily don't go to a lower level. Try to fill it up at the before levels. So what is the good way? Instead of filling up E like this, where can I put E? Where can I put E?
Anybody please help me. First of all, did you understand why I said putting here is wrong in a strict binary tree? This is wrong. Did you all understand why? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you all understood this is wrong. Then tell me what is correct way of putting. How, how do you correctly fill up the strict binary tree? Where, where can I put E? If you tell me fast, you will get a break fast. You can put anywhere here. I have this capacity, I have this capacity, I have this capacity, right? I can put anywhere here, okay? So let me put here, okay? Similarly, I take F. Now, if I put here, is this correct or wrong in a strict binary tree? Can I put it at the next level? At least tell me, is it correct or wrong? And it's for good for you guys if you answer because I can take the theory and go away. Okay, I it's good if you answer because it'll these concepts will remain in your mind for long if you are interactive. Right? It's it's okay even if you make mistakes. I'm happy that you tell and make mistake rather than being silent. You will you will you will remember that mistake for long. You'll never repeat it even if you make mistake in the class. I'm okay. Right. So I hope you get this. So is there any, I feel this, I feel this. Can I put I at level two? I'm not sure if you guys are still listening, but if you are there, can you tell me, can I put I at level two? Is it possible? No, ma'am. No. So I don't have any choice. Now I have to take a new level. So in this case, going to the new level is not wrong in a strict binary tree. This is okay, this is correct, okay? That's what strict binary tree is, okay? Complete or full binary tree, we have already seen this. This is a complete binary tree. Complete binary tree means we know how many nodes should be there at each level. That is completely populated. It is not half done, right? It's This is a full full uh, complete binary tree because at every level max number of nodes are occupied okay but if you see as you keep adding nodes right uh, at this level it is full binary tree but i need to add more nodes i want to add i j k i want to add so at some point it will become not full okay so i but as i go i make sure it is balanced i make sure it is getting added correctly so such kind of a tree is called almost complete. Okay, it's almost complete binary tree. So there's something called complete binary tree. There's something called almost complete binary tree. Okay, so with that, we are done with all the definitions of the trees. And now when I say binary tree, you all understand root, leaf, everything you understand, left, right, right? So traversal is, like I said, how do you visit the nodes, okay? You could visit the nodes for different purposes. One is for searching. You want to search some node. So that is where you want to visit. The other one is you just want to print the data, right? You just want to print all your data structure, whatever is there in that, right? So that's where you want to visit everything and print the data. Uh, that's one case. So basically you want to search or you want to print, right? It's, it can also be an effective way of sorting. You can sort the data also, okay? So because of all these reasons, you want to visit the node. And that is why traversal is called visiting, right? There are different ways of visiting a node in a binary tree. These are the three different ways, pre-order, in-order, post-order. What is pre, in, post? It is with regard to root. So pre means, okay? What is the pre-order? First, you will visit the root. Then you will visit your left and then you will visit your right. So here pre means root is first. In order means what? First you will visit your left, then root is in middle, then you will visit your right side. This is in order. 
okay post order means first you will visit your left then you will visit your right then we'll visit your root so root is at the end okay that's it this is your post order okay now this you, one thing you have to remember is it is done recursively this approach you have to do recursively at every step okay so let's look at it let's let's do the pre order first okay so first pre order so what does pre order say first you have to visit your root so i will visit the root so here root is what is the root this is the root right so i visited the root first okay then it says visit your left after visiting the root visit your left after that visit your right this is the pre order okay we are done with this we come to this we come to this remember that this is another subtree right you have to do this the moment you hit the subtree this complete thing you have to recursively do it so now you hit the tree on the left side okay so now you have to do the same algorithm again so visit the root first so in this subtree this is the root right so i visited the root first right then what i have to do i have to visit the left then i have to visit the right right so now you come here if this is getting let's see okay let's do it this way. first you visit your root then you came here okay then you visit this is the root of the subtree this is done so then you came here because this is the left now this again if you see this is a subtree of its own which is just a root but no children no left no right so i visit i visit the root okay now you tell me is there anything further here there is no left there is no right right so i am done with this so now you have to go back go back to the root okay so you're done with root okay you're done with this this left subtree is also over now you go to the right side so you visit here so this is done you go here and you come here this is 35 okay so you are done with this you go back to your subtree you finish this complete subtree right you go back here so your root is done this complete left subtree is done now you come to the right okay so now you come and visit this 75 is it clear what is pre order no confusing root left right okay let's do one more example this is a big example okay let's see if you can follow me okay pre order root left right okay so first i will do the root i will go here then i will come to the left side okay so now again i visit the root then the rule says go to the left then again i visit the root then the rule says go to the left again this is the root then the rule says go to the left again this is the root the rule says go to the left there is no left right i have visited the root there is no left there is no right so i am done with this part of the iteration so recursively if you do it you will go back here right you this step is done the step is completed so when you go back to the step you would have visited root you would have finished your left one you will come and check there is nothing on the right so you finished this level also so you go back right so you go back you go back here again you will check anything on the right no so this level also you are done you go back right now you are at this level you finish the root you finish the complete left now you are coming to the right right now again this is recursive so it will hit a tree so it will apply the rule again the root did we visit what did i say 15 9 7 6 so we came back we came back we came back now we are here right i visit the root then the rule says go to the left at this point this is another subtree i don't know what is this 10 or 16 okay 
now there is no left no right so i am done with this subtree i go back so i am done with the root i am done with the left i am going to the right so i visit this root so there is nothing on the left right so now i go to the right i visit this root there is nothing to the left there is nothing to the right i go back so this is completely done left is also done root is done right is done i go back here also if you see root was done complete left is done complete right is done so i go back here also root was done i already visited this complete left is done complete right is done i go back here what happened root is done complete left is done now i have to do the right side so now i visit here so visit the root then take your left then here again set the root now here take a left but i don't have any left right so i go to the right so here again it's a subtree so i repeat the algorithm the root there is no left no right i am done with this i come back i finished root i finished left and right i came back i finished root i finished the left now i have to do the right so this is the root then i have to go to the left this is again a subtree so i apply i go to the root then i go to the left there is no left i go to the right there is no right so i come back i finish the root i finish the left now i'm going to the right okay so i visit the root there is no left so i'm going to the right i was at 40 then again no left no right so i go back i'm done with this i'm done with this so root is over complete left is over complete right is over so i go back here also root over complete left over complete right over so i go back so at this point when we started this right i had first taken the root 15 then we completed the full subtree left subtree the so left subtree was up till here right and then we completed the complete right subtree this was your complete right subtree this is your tree order okay very very important okay i want to take one more example we have five more minutes so what i'll do is instead of doing in and post today i'll keep this for the next class i will take one more example for pre order and let me see if you can answer i'll take some simple example only uh, i want somebody to answer attempt and answer even if it is wrong it's okay but please attempt and answer i'll give a very simple okay can you give me pre order traversal every time you write this you write this also root left and right okay so how will you do first which one you will visit somebody please unmute and help me with the answer so it says first visit the root so which one you will visit come on this is very easy which one you will visit first anybody attempt i'm sure whoever attempts and tries to answer they will be easy they will find this easy in the exam so please attempt and answer anybody from the class you are there or you left for the other class sabia nas i'm sorry if i'm not taking everybody's name anybody couldn't hear you ma'am <laughs> you didn't hear what part question or the full explanation 
question okay question is solve this solve the pre order traversal so how will you, if somebody says given the subtree uh, given this binary tree write the pre order traversal for this tree how you will write okay i'll help you first root so which is the root here 10 so you will visit this 10 now when i say left you have to go to the left subtree always remember this is recursion okay so because it's a subtree it is recursive so here in this subtree which is the root 5 correct so you went here this was your root because the algorithm says always print root first so i did the root then you have to go to the left so now you have going to the left subtree so in this subtree which is the root in this subtree which is the root 2 2 right so any more subtrees uh, here can i go to the left here so because it says after root go to left can i go to left here after 2 here any left right is there for 2 yes ma'am where where is the left for 2 this is a leaf node no it doesn't have any left or right correct yes no ma'am left no right that means this subtree we have completed so after this what happens you go back here you finished root you finished the left subtree so now what you should go you finished root you finished left so you should go to then come to right so you should pick the right subtree so which is the root here one one right so you finished this completely so it doesn't have any left or right so you are done with this so you come here you completed if you now see you have completed this full subtree right you have completed the full left of it so we finish the root we finish the full left subtree now you come to the right subtree this one this is very small it just has one node so here what do you do with the subtree what do you print right so you print 20 there is no left no right so we are done you finished root you finished the complete left we finished the complete right okay this is how you do the pre order one is substitution method okay substitution method is okay this one we didn't look at last class so i'll just show you this what is a substitution method is also same thing it's it's more for uh, easier reading so what you can do is first write the rule what is the rule of pre order root first then left side of the tree then right side of the tree so just so we come here and this is your root right so you just write down the root now when you go to the left your left is actually this complete tree it's it's not one number right your left is actually a tree so that is why you will for the left and this is your right so first of all identify your left and right portions okay now when you want to expand left so what we said was your left and right could actually be trees subtrees right so when it is subtree you have to apply the same rule again so for that tree again you have to put the same rule root left and right so that is why this in this left when you go to this left subtree you apply the same rule so you first do root you just copy that okay and then you will have left and right now again here you have left this is the left and this is the right so wherever you have root you substitute for the remaining one you just write left and right that further you need to expand so here you got these two numbers now what is left left is 15 okay then you put just left uh, root then this is your root so here root is 35 you just put left and right finally these two don't have any left any right so it's empty basically the, these two are empty so that's how you get this pre order traversal so let us look at in order traversal okay now uh, in the last class we also saw that algebraic expressions can also be constructed in tree so that is why in your textbook you, you have this kind of an example for tree uh, don't get confused because always we have seen tree where we put a b c d as nodes right you can have something like this 
or you can have some numbers 10 20 30 you can have some numbers you can also have algebraic expressions like this is multiplication sign then you may have some number then you have plus sign then you may have some other number so this is also algebraic expressions also are expressed as trees okay so this is one such example for us it doesn't matter the ordering traversal is still the same so how do you do in order traversal you have left side root and then right i hope my screen is visible because i'm getting a internet problem kind of a message yeah okay so what is a uh, uh, direction method so just apply the rule so what it says go to the left okay now if you see here you need to keep going to the left left is up remember left is always a subtree okay so you need to recursively apply the rule so you start here it says go to the left but then this again is a tree so apply the same rule go to the left okay apply the same rule it doesn't have any left so now you print this note okay so here left we finished the left then we printed the root then we came to the right okay now in the right subtree we did the same recursion so we did the left then you go print the root okay then go to the right but there is no right here okay so we go back so at this point this subtree we have finished both left root and right so now you go back at this point we finish the left side of this tree right so now you can print the root then go to the right now you know that this is a subtree so apply the same rule again go to the left so print eight then print the root then go to the right but at this point it's a subtree so go to left again it's a subtree so go to left so now you don't have any subtree left so you print this nine okay left is over so now you print the root and then you print the right side of it okay so here your left is over now you print the root then go to the right now this is a subtree again apply the same formula left root right so left root okay there is no right this is empty okay so this is the direction mechanism let us do also the substitution mechanism same thing substitution you write down the rule first left root and right okay this t1 like this is basically i'm saying the left is nothing but a subtree okay root you can replace whatever the data of that root node is and then right is actually a subtree for you okay so you need to substitute you need to expand so you apply the formula so what does formula say go to the left okay so this is your left then go to the right this is your right uh, sorry root and then go to the right okay at this point because it's a subtree you cannot put the notes you're just putting r here okay this anyways you got it from your previous way t2 this one again here if you apply the formula what you'll get left root so you have applied that but right side you still further have to expand in this part you still have to expand so if you go down further these two we got now how do you expand right so this is the right so you have to say left root and then there is so you have left root and there is no right so you leave that empty okay so this anyways you got from your before now this part you need to expand so this subtree right you need to expand how do you expand you say left okay you cannot put a number because you know that there is some subtree down you further have to substitute it okay then you put the root then you put the right here also you will not put any value because you know that you further have to expand it so if you go down further okay this and all you got it from before only okay from pre previous step you got this ma'am why we can't uh, write it in what at once ma'am if you are like this is a substitution method so you're showing step by step like if you can just by looking at this if you can write down that is also okay that is the direction method if in your k in your exam it comes for like say two marks right just write uh, apply in order traversal so you can just look at it in order traversal is left root right so if i will say i go to left i go to left so but just by looking at this also you can solve this problem so i finish my left i go to root 
then I go to right. At this point, I apply the formula. I go to left, then root. Then there is nothing. I finished all of this. Then I come here. Left side is done. Root. I go here. I have to apply this. So left, root. Right side, I further have to expand. So I go here. Left, left, left. Then root. Then right. Then I'm going here. Left is done. Then root is The two is repeating to them here. So left root, then I go to the right. Further, I have to apply, then I go to the left, then root. So just by looking at this also, you can solve this. If it's just for like and one more thing, why you're doing this is if you do it this way, no, when you actually you have problems also, you have lab programs for this, right? Each time when you're doing, you're actually applying recursion. Like here, you will say in order. Say this is a method name called uh, in order. So at this point, right? you will apply this uh, rule again. So you will call that in order method here. You will call in order method here. Here also, right? You will apply this. You will call in order method. So this is a recursively, it will get expanded. So if you can understand substitution, you can also understand how this recursion works. When you actually come to lab program, right? You can further understand how it works. That's all. Otherwise, it's, it's the same. By looking at it also, you can solve it. So you go to the left. Okay, so here you need this uh, nine, then four on the right side, you're applying this, you already have solved this. So what is on the left, 10 and finally six, right? So I hope in order is clear. You solve this, I think if you, the more you solve, the more easier it is. And it is very quick. You can just finish this problem very quickly. It's very less uh, time consuming also, okay. Uh, let's do one for this. Okay, let's do in order for this. Direction method, I will just apply the, okay, let me just copy this. We'll, we'll do both methods here. Okay. So let's do direction method. Generally, I have seen in your programs, in your textbook, you, they've given two methods, but in your programs uh, or exams, no, it just asks for traversal, that's all. It doesn't ask uh, substitution or direction method. So. I just wanted to make you aware. In case you get a question like that, you know how to solve it in both ways. So in order, so what is the rule for in order? Left, root, right, okay? So I start here. I need to go to the left, go to the left. So 15, so this is done. Then I go to the root, then I go to the right. Right, so this part is done. I finished the left. Now I'll print the root. Right. Now I go to the right. So here there is it's it's a leaf node, it doesn't have anything. It is as simple as this. Okay. Let's do the substitution method. I hope this is clear. If if you have doubts why how these numbers are coming, you can stop me if you if it is not clear. Let's do substitution method. Left, root, right. So wherever left is there, it's a, so this is a subtree for me. So I'll just put it as left. I need to further expand this. I can directly put the root. Right side also, I don't need to expand. It is, it's, it's a last node, it's a leaf node. So I can right away put it. Now this, if I have to expand, how will I get left, right? Uh, sorry, left, root, and right. So left, root, and right. Okay. So this is the order. So in both ways, you see same numbers are found. 15, 25, 35, 45, 75. Okay. And finally, post-order traversal. Post, so the naming convention, pre, in, post, it's all based on the position of the root. Okay, so post means root is at the last. So it is left, right, and root. Direction method, let's apply this. So what it says, go to the left. Okay, it is a subtree, I'll go to the left again. Then it says, okay, you're done with this. Now here, I don't have any left, okay? Then it says, check if you have any right. I don't have any right. And finally, you print the root. Okay, so here at this point, I finish this left. But now I cannot, this is important, okay? I cannot print this because the rule says finish your left, the finish your right also. 
So now what I will do is I further have to go check the right side. Okay, now this is a subtree, so I apply the same rule recursively. Go to the left. Now here, go to the left, there's nothing on the left. Go to the right, there's nothing on the right. This is the root. Okay, so now I finished left. I have to check something on the right, nothing on the right. Then I print the root. So now I have finished the left, I have finished the right, then I print the root. Okay, now going back, I finished the left. I cannot print this root because I have to complete the right side, right? So let's apply recursively again, go to the left. Now here, check if anything left, no. Anything on the right, no. Now this becomes the root. So we completed the left. We have to complete the right before we print the root. So left, go to the left. Now go to the left, nothing on the left, nothing on the right. So I print my, I finished left. I need to check right and then I print the root. Okay. So I finished left, I have to check the right. So this is again subtree, so check the left, check the left, check the right, then print the root. Left is done, nothing on the right, so now I print the root. So here left done, right done, now I print the root. Coming back up, left done, right done, print the root. And finally, left done, right done. Now I print the root. Okay. We'll do the same thing, substitution method. So write down your rule, left, right, and then the root. Left and right, you need to substitute. Root, you can put it directly. Okay. Let's let us ex ex expand. Okay. So you have left. You can either put directly because there's nothing further to expand. Then right side, you have something, you need to expand that, and then you can just put the root. So this way, if you further expand this, how do you get left, right, and then the root, right? So you need to check what is on the left, something is on the right, and then you can directly print the root. Further expand this left, you will get, okay, two is here, okay? And then you print, there's nothing on the right. Okay, that's why this, it's empty, and then this is your root. Um, and now I'll only highlight what has to be expanded, okay? So here, your left side directly eight, there's nothing else. Right side, you further have to check. And finally, you can place at the end this root, okay? Uh, how do you expand this right? You check on the left, you check on the right, and then you put the root, okay? So further, you need to expand this left side. So you put left, right, and then root. So that's why it is nine, one, four. Finally, this side, if you want to expand, left, right, and root. So 10, there's nothing on the right, and you put six, okay? So I hope this is clear. Let, we'll do one more example here by post-order traversal. This is post, okay? Post is left, right, and root. So look at the direction method, go here, go here, go here, there's not, no left, no right, I print this root. Then go up, left is done, I need to go to the right and print this. Then I go back, right? So now I can print the root. So left done, okay? Now I need to go to the right, print this. So left done, right done, so I can print the root. Substitution method also let us do left, right, root. So there's something on the left, you have to still solve this. Right, you can, it's just one note, so I'll right away put it. Root also, you know, it is this for the same. So if you further expand this, how do you get? Same thing, left, right, and root. Now it is just one, no, no further subtree. So I'll write directly place the numbers. Left, then I have, so left, right, and root, right? So 15, then 35, and finally the root, 25, right? So if you finally expand this, the numbers will look like this. 25, 75, 
44. Okay. Um, these are what is there in your uh, like algorithm if they have to, if they ask you to write. Like I said, we use recursion in all three methods. The algorithm is very uh, straightforward. Okay. Let, let's look at that. Okay. Uh, if your root is not null, you process that root. So basically your root node should have some number. It, it should not be an empty node. Okay. That's what this condition says. Otherwise it is an empty tree, right? Only if you have some number, you're going to apply this formula, right? If your root itself is a null node, it doesn't have the tree itself is not there. It's an empty tree. That's what it means. Your actual algorithm starts here. So this is what pre-order. So you have to do, so you have to do root left and right, right? So what does it do? Uh, this is step one is the root, okay? You're checking the condition for the root. That is why you're checking the root, right? And then here you traverse to the left. That's why you say, if your left is not null, you're calling the same method. This is why it's, I said it's a recursion. You have pre-order, you're calling the pre-order, okay? But now you're passing the left side. The third one is your right. So same thing, you check your right, you're calling the same method recursion, but now with right. Okay. In order, so you have your left, root and right. So if you see here, uh, traverse the left of the subtree if the root is in order, right? So if your root is null, print uh, tree is empty, you check here. Right, you call first with in order left of the root, then you process the root, and then you call same in order with right side. Let's look at post order. Post is what left, right, and root. So you check the left, you call the same recursion to the left, you call check the right, so you call the same recursion to the right. And finally, you process the root. Okay. Uh, because I have the program also ready, we can quickly check the program also. Yeah, pre order post. Okay. Let me run it and show you. Okay. So first of all, no, uh, th this is printing. It's saying pre-order is this, in-order is this, post-order is this. So you know struct. You know struct means it will have data. It will have your left and your right. So every time you see a struct node, you should imagine this picture in your mind, okay? So what does it say? Root of left, okay? So your left, you're defining a new node. So it will come like this, okay? And uh, this, this new node, if you see, it is taking a value. I'll show you what new node is, right? right? Every time you call, here you see you're calling new node so many times, right? What does new node do? It will create some memory for this block, okay? It will put the data, whatever data you pass in your new node, it, that means whatever number you pass here. Here we are seeing new node of one, right? That means this is one, okay? So initially it will, this links will be empty. This will be null, null. But now you have to tell where should this left and where should this right point to. So you're saying it's now no more null. You will point to another block. Okay, so there's another new node with data two. Okay, here you're saying your right side is pointing to another new node. Okay, whose data is three. Okay, because new node is called initially, it will be left and right will be null only. Now look at this one. You're further saying this is your root, right? So root of left is this, okay? You're saying this one's left. That means here, this one's left is another node, okay? Whose data is four. When you call new node, default this will be null, okay? Now this line, it says root of left, that means this one, okay? And that one's right, that means here, is also a new node, okay? Whose data is five, right? 
This is how you are defining your tree. So here also we have some techniques, but I want to understand, uh, make you understand what is the difference. We, we saw tree traversal, right? So tree will, we have seen tree structure like this. Now let us see if we have to, uh, how do we do graph traversal? In a graph, you can have uh, something like this, right? If you see it is very unstructured, tree is very perfectly structured. Whereas graph you can draw, you can have so many ways of drawing a graph, it's unstructured, right? First, that's one difference. Then the second one is in a tree, always you have a starting node. You don't ask in the input, which node shall I start? Because you know that you always start your traversal with your root node, right? So you know what is your first node. But in this graph, right, you cannot tell which is your starting node. Your starting can be B or I, I want to start as F or I can start as A, right? You, there is no first node, okay? So that is why in your graph traversal, when you write program also, explicitly you have to ask okay this is adjacency you you say how many vertex you tell me the adjacency matrix you also tell which node do you want to start traversing okay because there is no first node the second difference in tree is all nodes are connected you start you apply any technique in order pre-order post-order whatever technique you apply you will cover all the nodes right this is given all nodes are traversed however in a graph right? It may be that only some nodes are reachable. You start, suppose, for example, if you start with A, you can reach B, you can reach E, you can reach D. From here, you can reach C, from here, you can reach, right? So this is all. You cannot reach F and G if you start with A, right? So if you want to completely traverse the graph, you again have to take, so you took this as your first node, you completed, you again have to take F as your first node, then you will be able to complete all the nodes, right? So you may need another starting node to cover all nodes. Okay, that's the second difference. Um, another difference in between tree and the graph is, one node will occur only once. Like whatever traversal technique you do, you will never, you start with in order, you will never repeat the note again. It is very clear, unique notes, right? However, here, for example, uh, what do I mean by that? Let me show you. See, for example, B and E. When I start with A, right? Some of you may prefer to choose B. So your graph will look something like A, B, something like this, okay? But some of you may start with A and pick E. So your sequence will look a e something something right and some others may start with d right because all possible combinations are there right so your sequence you all have done correctly but your sequence answers will vary right however in a tree when i say do in order no matter who does your sequence is always will be the same right so that's one another difference your answers may differ from one another Okay. So, and one more thing is, uh, if you come here, right, say, okay, let, let's continue this. Say, I reached A to B. Okay. Then from B to C, I reached. Okay. Now I go back and say, okay, I have not traversed D. Let me come to E. You, if you continue traversing from E also, you will reach C. So this C node may be reached more than once. It, it can be reached from B, like I can have A, B, C, okay? It can also be reached from A, E, C, right? So this may occur more than once in your traversal. So you need to be very careful. Basically what you have to maintain, you need to maintain a flag. The moment you put A, you mark A as visited. The moment you put B, you put B as visited. Then you put C, you put C as visited. Then further, when you continue this traversal, right? Say, you go to E, okay, you mark E as uh, traversed, okay, you basically you need, need one flag, which says, yeah, I have visited. Then from E to C, if you go, no, you will realize, oh, this is already traversed, so I cannot put C again. Basically, that flag will help you determine that. Okay. So there is a need for you to maintain some kind of a flag or a marker or a state for the notes, whether it is visited or not. And here it is unique traversal techniques. So the sequence is always unique. Okay, but here you apply the same technique, but it may give different, different sequence. We saw that also. 
and uh, we saw the different types here it is pre order in order post order traversals now for graph you have two techniques called depth first search and breadth first search just looking at the names you can know depth first means you will go as deep as possible okay you will go as deep as possible till you cannot go further deep then you come back and you continue your depth first breadth first is you go as wide as possible breadth first means you go as wide as so when i start here i will check can i go here can i go here can i go here so as wide as possible when you go here you will check all the possible combinations right so this is breadth first depth first is you go as deep as possible we'll take a look at both the examples okay these are the only two ways of doing it so we'll take a look at the example also depth first right so if you do depth first here again you need some kind of a starting node so let us assume my starting no your answers like i said may differ based on what is your starting node say example this is just an example no hard and fast rule okay say i took a as my starting node so with a as starting node how will your depth first look like okay so if you see here you first go to b i hope this is clear right so you go you start with a so a is your starting one because it says depth first right i i visit b and i don't go side i go down because i am doing depth first i go as down as possible right so beyond this i cannot go so what i do is okay from c okay you see i can so i visited this i visited this i visited this from this can you visit e yes you said that also okay then you continue if you go again from e to a that means it is already visited right so you cannot take this it will form a loop basically right because a will repeat two times so you stop here so your first depth when you continue you will go to a you will go to b you will go to c you will go to e because that's how they all are connected at this point you have to break because if you further continue you will go back to a right which is already visited so you stop here then you go back and check okay i am done with this you go back and check from c are there any other possibilities no we have already covered right so you go back and check from b are there any other possibilities yes i can go to d right this again you continue depth first right so you keep continue you keep checking from d if you keep going what will happen from d if i go i will go to a but a is already done so you stop here right so then you go back and check from a is there any other possible route yeah d is possible but that's already done e is possible but that's also done okay so that's how you do your depth first is this clear depth first is clear yes ma'am yes ma'am okay so what kind of data structure you will need to do this you will need stacks to do this stack data structure you remember stack stack is whatever you put in say you put 10 you can put from up okay you put 10 you put 20 but if you have to take out you can only take out whatever is on top so you can take out 20 after you take out 20 only you can take out 10 okay so you whatever goes last comes out first last in first out okay that is your stack so how stack helps in dfs we'll see that so this is same repeating by using a stack okay this this ladder kind of a thing is a stack okay so when you start your starting node put that entry in your stack okay then go down because it's depth first search put that entry in your stack so now you have b then you further go down c you put that entry in your stack okay then when you go further down okay here e so you have you put e in your stack okay when you further go you cannot uh, go to a because a is already visited so you cannot you will not put this after that what happens you can't do anything else right you can't further add so now you start removing so you pop this is called popping 
when you pop out, you pop out E. Okay, so E is gone. So that's how you come back. Now you now you are at C because C is in your maybe I did two steps in this. Let me show you middle. So your stack initially A B C and E. This is how your stack was. Okay. Now further you cannot put A because A is already visited. So what you can do, you have to now take out from the stack. So you remove E. Okay. So you are gone back here. You are, you are gone back to C. So you check, is there any other way? No other way, right? So you remove of C also from the stack. So you go back. So going back, you see how it is implemented in stack? Oops. Okay, good. You, you understood how uh, popping helps you go back. C and E. E, you cannot go any further, so you remove this. You check from C, is there any other possibility? No. You check from B, is there any other possibility? Yes, there is a possibility for D. That is how now you will add D in the stack. You understood from this stack, how did we land into this stack, right? Okay, then you check from D, is there any other possibility to any new uh, node? No, right? So what you do after this, you pop out D, A, B. So you remove D, okay? Then you go back to B and check, is there any other possibility? No other possibility. So you remove B. Finally, you go to A and check, is there any other possibility? Yeah, there is possibility, but that's already visited. Here also it's already visited. So finally, your stack becomes empty. Okay. Depth first. Okay. Um, let's let's do this one example. It's already solved, but let me try to do this. Okay. So how do you start? You start with one. Right, you put one, okay. So one is visited. Then you check what are all the possible combinations. I can go two or three, okay. Here I have shown an example with two. Now let me take an example with three and show you. You can choose any, anything, okay. So let, let me say I took three. So I put three in the stack. So from three, so I visited this. Okay, I visited one. I visited three, then I have to go deep, right? I have two more choices. I can go to six or seven. Let me say I chose seven. So I go to seven. Again, depth first, right? I keep going down. So let me go to eight. Okay. So from eight, again, I have choices. I can go to six or five or four, right? Let me go to four. So I go to four. So how did we come here? Seven, eight, and four, right? So from four, again, keep going deep, right? So I can reach two. So from four, I can reach two. I keep adding in the stack. So from two, what are the possible combinations? I can go to one, but one is already visited, so I cannot take this one. From two, is there any other possibility? Yes. There is possibility to go to five, right? So from two, I go to five. Okay, from five, where I can go? I can go to eight, but eight is already visited. So I cannot take the set. Any other combinations from five? No. So now we are come to an end of the depth, right? We cannot go further deep. Now what you have to do, you have to pop out. Okay, so go back here and check any other alternate from two. No, we have visited everything. So pop out, go back and check any other alternate from four. No, we have visited no. everything. Go back and check any other alternate route from eight. Yeah, there are many routes, but five is taken, four is taken, seven is taken, but yeah, six nobody has taken. So I can go to. Mm -hmm. 
So from eight, you can go to six, right? So I put six here. Now check from six, any possible routes? Yeah, there are, but three is taken. So I, can, I can't go anywhere else from six. Eight, we checked. Seven, go back to seven and check. All routes are taken. Right, go back to three and check. All, all nodes are taken. And finally go back to one and see any other route possible. No, all routes are taken. So your depth first in this case looks like one, three, seven, eight, six, four, two, five. So you can write something like this. One, two, three, seven, no, no, seven, eight, sorry, four, two, five, and finally six. This is how your depth first search looks like.